Hi everyone, I'm Maria and thank you so much for watching this video. So I would like to introduce you to a new series that's happening now on Patreon. It's called Farm Life. So we're painting different farm scenes, landscapes. Uh, this series consists of seven classes. Actually, it's eight classes because the first one is about practicing like painting farmhouses, buffalo and some birds. There's also a PDF file, a workbook uh, with step-by-step -step images on how to paint these objects as well. So we're going to have a new class every Tuesday, uh, a part of our regular schedule on Patreon. We'll start with this first one called Dandelion Farm. If you would like to watch a full class, it's available on Patreon. The link is below this video. Thank you. And wait it for three, four minutes. I may wet it for extra minute just because this feels like a hot press. I think I'm pretty good. Normally what I like to do is push the water over the edges. Here I have to be careful because I have a pad. This is my test piece. I went very gently on everything, very lightly. And the sky, I like the sky. I made it more reddish on the bottom, which is yellow, red, and this is mostly the yellow. And I switched to my flat 24. I'm just going to clean it quickly, make sure it's clean. And I'm going to grab like a milk like ratio of imidazolone yellow here. There's a little bit of quinacridone red right away. And I'm kind of like, I like that what I see in the reference, but I want to make it more kind of reddish. So it's kind of like I'm circling it a little bit. And now I'm going to grab more of that quinacridone red. I'm gonna grab a little bit of iso yellow just because I have it and some of that quin red, even more quin red. If you notice, my strokes are very quick, kind of going from left to right, but I wanna continue going down. So I'm gonna grab more of the yellow, milk like ratio, some iso yellow, and I did squeeze some of the raw sienna. I kind of like just having different shades of the yellows. Now, do I follow the reference? Yes and no, because I made the bottom part much smaller. I gave room, more room to the sky. Now, one thing you gotta keep an eye on is water going from the washi to the paper. So this is my paper towel, and I'm just going to take off some of that. And then continue adding the colors, so all my yellows, something like that. And remember that the area here, it will dry faster because this is where we kind of started, or actually we started there. Applying a little bit of green. So there's my sap green now as well. So this is where I see some of that, or start seeing more and more green, right? It's not the same as we see in the reference again. So I gotta adjust. What I'd like to do is grab this yellow, green, and a little bit of Van Dijk brown. And that'll give me like a different shade of that green. And this is somewhat like, so this is a flattened brush, and I'm gonna, Create like a quick line here. This is where I'm gonna have some trees. This is where I'm gonna have the houses or the, the barn house. And I'm gonna grab more of that Van Dyke Brown just to add it here. And even maybe like burnt sienna wouldn't hurt. Just a little bit. Actually I have burnt sienna on this side. So a little bit of that. This will keep spreading, just FYI. And I'm aware of it because paper's still nicely wet actually. And then some of the yellows with the green. So you're changing the, the ratios between the colors. So here's the thing. Every time you grab the paint from the palette, you change the ratios between colors. Now I just grabbed some of the uh, raw sienna, right? And you can go over the houses a little bit too. This is plus Van Dijk Brown now. And I'm just gonna use this side of a brush just to create some texture lines. And all this would be bigger in the foreground. More of the greens, yellows, all of it. I basically just scooped all that paint. So here is my rigor size two. And what I wanna do is grab creamy paint. So soft green, some of the yellow. Actually, let's just start with that so you can fill it up. And then you're just creating like grass, Strokes now, this has to be creamy paint, and then you grab other, like creating other sheets. So, but for example, I just grabbed some blue, so some blue, and remember that everything in the background would be uh, smaller. 
I just grabbed a little bit of Van Dyke Brown. This is creamy paint, okay? Cream top like razor between white and pink. You want to do this before this is too dry. So that's why I'm going here. And I'm going to grab a little more of yellow, green, Van Dyke Brown. And I'm going to go right underneath the, the housing, all, this, all these buildings, just to have some shadows. But I need way more of the Van Dyke Brown. And I even grabbed some of the Follow Blue. This is still not enough of the Van Dyke Brown, so I'm grabbing a little more. And this is creamy paint. So this will dry super fast for me, uh, even though I wet it for like five minutes, because this is almost like a hot press. So Sorry. more of that Van Dyke Brown plus green. Now I just grabbed green. I'm grabbing like thicker paint, okay? Now what do we do about the down the lines? So for that, it will... So you want to watch how the paper is drying because as soon as you see like, okay, there's no more shine, the paper still feels damp, that's when you want to start lifting colors. First of all, I have a tree here. So I'm quickly going to add this here. So it's like quick painting of the branches. Just so I don't miss out on that timing. It's all, you want to do it wet on wet so you don't have to work too hard on it because otherwise later it's just going to be like, wet on dry and well, first of all you don't want to actually do this fence wet on dry because it's all kind of blurred out so this is the fence so I'm just using the tip of my brush and then what I should have done is actually start with the trees in the background but I started right away with the fence so I'm gonna start working on the trees in a second and you can place some of the trees right in front of the house too so same thing, it's just basically uh, the brown and Van Dyke brown and some of this sap green. And this is, that's what we're doing this wet on uh, wet with this first layer. So it's all kind of like, so don't be afraid to like add like way more color here in this foreground because it, it should be way darker. That's pretty much it, although there should be like a little line of some grass, something underneath this part. So something like that, to, so it shows more of that. And again, if you want to continue lifting for the dandelions or just the grass, you can do that too. So you just go over it with a rigor brush. So this is a clean rigor brush and you can add some highlights. Let's add some stems. So this is Van Dyke Brown, some um, yellow and grain. Let's say just want to add some stems. This is creamy paint. So maybe just a little bit of that if you want to. But other than that, I think that's pretty much it. And then we will come back to paint the, the farmhouses. Hi friends, so the paper dried. I'm actually for safety, I'm gonna place a little piece of a paper towel over here just so I don't smear anything. But how are we gonna paint these uh, the the barn house or uh, the house, I guess the farmhouse? So first of all, I have a smaller brush. This is my uh, round three, this is my somber details. Let's grab some of the yellow, let's grab a little bit of this Van Dyke Brown. Maybe a little bit of blue too. Maybe more of the brown. So some, oops, there you go. Sorry about that. And then we're going to start. And the best is if you don't have much paint on the brush and actually way thicker paint. So that was not enough. I'm grabbing a little thicker paint on my brush. And first I'm going to shape it, something like this. Then I'm going to grab a little bit of blue with it. And kind of drag it like this. So this is a little different for me because I'm painting almost like a on a um, co uh, hot press paper. But if you are painting on a cold pressed, this is just a little bit of yellow, then it will be much easier for you because dry brushing, it's like it does magic. You can do magical things with when you dry brush. Now this is the wall, so a little more paint. But I want to wipe the brush on a towel, so I don't have that much paint. I don't have to like connect all the pieces. And then let's go for the rooftop. I'm gonna grab a little bit of indigo, Van Dyke Brown, and maybe make it lighter actually. 
since that would be like affected by the light. So you see, I can't really do much dry pressing. So I'm adding a little bit of that water to my yellows and kind of dragging it, but I should have more to that rooftop, rooftop right here. So letting a little bit of the browns as well. So that's all I need to do, right? So I hope this gives you kind of an idea. So for the birds, because this is pretty small, I suggest using a smaller brush. This is my round zero. And for the birds, I like to grab kind of the same combination, which is like blue and, and brown, but I wipe my brush on a towel so I don't have much paint. So I can do a little bit of that dry brushing. And this is gonna be like tiny birds right above the farm and maybe a little more brownish but wiping my breast I don't have too much paint and as you see like the the fibers are separated so it creates like a more natural effect And that's it for this painting. So I'm going to remove this washi. I was thinking like, well, it better doesn't rip the paper, right? Because it's Hanemile's washi and it's Hanemile's uh, watercolor paper, but it does rip a little bit of the paper. So that's it for this class. And please let me know if you have any questions. that the highlight has some color in it and in this case it's like a blue violet so follow blue with some quint red that's when I know I'm, okay this is going to have that undertone layer and I'm so when you look at the highlight this part is kind of really like white almost and then you have the blue